Hey, welcome to Fathering Our Future, the podcast for dads. I'm Anthony Vandegrift, and I am not the perfect dad, but every day I am trying to be better, and I hope you are too. I hope you don't just listen to the podcast to kill some time, which, by the way, thank you for listening to the podcast, but I hope you listen with purpose. I hope you listen to the podcast so that you might glean something, whether it's from me or from a guest, that you can add to yourself to improve upon yourself as a father. I hope that's what you're doing. Today, what I want to do is I want to talk about the mission of fathering our future, not just what I'm doing, but what we are all doing, whether we acknowledge it or not. I want to talk about the mission of fathering our future. I want to remind us of some things, and hopefully, I'm going to motivate and encourage you to love what you're doing and to strive to be a better dad every single day and to look for other dads that you can be in community with so that together we can better father our future. That's what I want to do, the meaning and the mission. It's a little bit cyclical, but I think that's a good thing. So I'm going to share the mission. I'm going to break it down a little bit. I'm going to scratch my nose because it's really itchy for all those watching. Sorry. But I want to share this and I want to help us. Because, yes, we need to love what we're doing. Because if you don't love what you're doing, you're not going to do a good job. And we don't just need to settle with the fact of, hey, I'm not the perfect dad. Because we can all say that. But we need to continue that statement on and saying, look, I see what is in front of me. I see what can be. So I'm not just going to settle with, I'm not perfect and you get what you get. I'm not a perfect dad, but I'm going to try and be a better dad. And I'm going to try and do it every day. And then lastly, looking for other dads that we can be in community with, building a relationship with another dad so that together we can better father our future. We are better together. And when we come together as a community, it opens up so many doors. One of the biggest things that it does immediately is it gives us resources. It gives us people that we can go to and talk to who have been where we are and who have gotten through it and who can be a voice of encouragement. But it also gives us the resource of knowledge because I don't know everything and I don't claim to know everything. There are people out there smarter than me and there's always somebody better than the next person. But when we come together and we work on this thing called fatherhood as a team, now, that's when we really start to make the difference. So, this is what I want to do. I'm talking about the mission today of fathering our future because I want us to do these things, love what we're doing, strive to be better, look for community because no matter how we feel about this, no matter what we think about ourselves as dads, we are fathering our future. Whether we do it with a passion or we do it passively, we are fathering our future. I think about every generation that psychologists have dubbed with particular names. You've got the baby boomers, you've got millennials, which that's where I fall. But every generation is a product of the parents. For the millennials specifically, since that's where I fall, a lot of our parents grew up without. They grew up and they had to work really hard to get what they got. And so what do they do for their kids? They did a lot for us. I think specifically with me, yeah, my mom and my dad never gave me chores to do. I think my dad tried to, <laughs> but my mom was like, no. So my mom cleaned my room. My mom, my mom did my laundry. My mom did all that stuff for me. Now I got out and I mowed the yard because I helped my father and I went to work and I, I did stuff. I wasn't just you know laying down all the time, but some of those things have carried over to where you know maybe it's innate, maybe it's because of my parents, maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know, but I am pretty lazy. If it wasn't for my wife, if it wasn't for having a family, if it wasn't for needing to do things, if I was financially set and stable and I was alone, I would probably sit in the ca on a couch or in a chair or lay in bed all day and just watch every movie that just come out. Now, if there is a position that does that where I can still be a great dad, a great husband and make a lot of money, someone let me know. Email me <laughs> because uh, that's my life's call. But the point of what I'm trying to say is Every generation is a result of their parents. We are fathering the generation to come. We truly are fathering our future. The ones, Lord willing, that we live long enough to see it, but the ones who will be the presidents, the ones who will be the CEOs, the government officials, the small business owners, the people in the workforce, they are our kids. 
in a few years. As they grow up to be adults, they're going to be the ones influencing the culture. They're going to be the ones influencing the world that we live in. We have more than an obligation as dads. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity as dads to make an impact in the home. Because your kids develop tendencies and traits at a young age that are influenced by you and your wife. And moms are important. I love mom. I love my, I love my, I'm not going to say I love moms. <laughs> I love the mother of my kids. But I also appreciate moms because they play an important role. But I'm talking to dads, okay? I recognize the incredibleness and the role of the mother. But dads, I'm talking to you today. We play a part and an influence in how our kids develop. The tendencies and the traits that come from us. The mannerisms that they have. Their communication abilities. All of these things they develop within the home. We influence those proclivities and those traits. We do that. Now, you can think to yourself, well, I go to work, I make a lot of money, I come home, and because I'm alpha male, I provide a sense of security. Those are good things. As men, we should do that. But there's so much more that we can do. That's why I say this is more than just an obligation. This ought to be an opportunity, and I hope we will all have that shift in perspective that I'm not just supposed to do these things because that's what a dad did and that's what a dad should do. There's more that you can there's more that you can do as a father. And that's what I want us to strive to do. This is the strive to be a better dad every day part. You can build communication with your kids. You can grow your relationship. Every relationship can grow. You have a relationship with your kids that is formed by blood. But it can still develop. It can still grow. There are relationships between parents, fathers, and their children that are horrible, where the kids want nothing to do with their dad. There are other relationships where kids call their dads every day because they want to share what happened. They want to share their story as it's unfolding. They want to get advice because their dad was always there to give them and provide them with that sound counsel that they needed. You have the opportunity. You can be the voice of reason. You can be the voice of support. You can be the one who lifts them up. You can be the one who is there when they are emotionally broken. Moms can do a lot of that stuff too, but dads, it really helps if you partner with your wife. It really helps if you do this thing together. So don't look at this as an obligation. Look at this as an opportunity. Part of being a better dad every day is watching your kids live out their life. One of the things that I hate, I hate seeing people say that 95% of being a dad is just being there. It's the biggest lie that we could tell fathers. Because that... It's just not true. Being there doesn't really accomplish anything. Your kids will grow up saying, well, you know, he's my dad. I know he loves me, and he's my dad, so you know, I love him. And then that's all they can say, because that's all you provided. Just the fact of, I'm your father, you're my kid, this is the way that it is. Being there is just a lie. You need to be there, but you need to be actively present. You need to be engaged in your kid's life. And there are so many benefits that come from being engaged, reading to your kids, even when they can't read themselves. This helps them in school. This helps them in ways that, if you just think about it, don't really seem to make sense. But it's as if there's some sort of benefit that rolls over as they get older and they learn how to read, it helps them academically. I recently saw a TED Talk where a lady was talking about a, a study that had been conducted over the span of 70 years in Britain where they were studying childhoods. And they found that parents who were 
reading to their kids at the age of five, and then again showing an interest in their kids' schoolwork when they were 10 years old. When those kids grew up to be adults in their 30s, they were removed from the poverty level. The likeliness that they would be in poverty was minuscule. And it was because they had parents who were engaged and actively present in their lives. So don't look at this as an obligation. Look at this as an opportunity. I think that every single one of us, we reflect on our own childhoods and we look at what our parents did and we love our parents. We think they did you know, a good job with what they had, but there are things that we want to tweak. There are things that we decide we'll do a little bit differently. I don't think that that's bad. I think that is a good thing. The only thing that I want to caution us with is make sure we don't let the pendulum swing all the way to the other side. Because this kind, this is a bit of the trend that happens from generation to generation. Again, parents, our parents had to work really hard to do stuff and to get stuff. And so we came around and they did everything for us. I never had to do a single thing in the home. I did stuff, fortunately, because of a number of reasons, but luckily, I gained a sense of responsibility. But my mother would have done everything for me for the rest of my life had I, had I not got married and moved out. And I'm not the only person like that. There are millennials everywhere who have the same story, and their outcome might look a little bit different. I think of the one <laughs> they brought mommy to their job interview. That was a funny article to read, but the point is, we have an influence on our kids as they grow up, whether we acknowledge it or not. And hopefully now you will acknowledge it and will change, but we are fathering our future. What you do in the home matters. What you do as a dad matters. And what you don't do as a dad still makes an impact. It might not be a good one, but it's still leaving an impression on your child or on your children. So, Keep that in mind. Look at your kids. Watch their growth. Watch their development. Study them. Know their needs and step in. Step up and step in. Step up to the challenge of being a dad. Step up to the opportunity. Step into their life and make the impression. Make the difference. This is what we ought to be doing. If we really want to accept the challenge that we have of fathering our future because this is what we are doing, then let's embrace it and let's truly strive to be better dads every single day. So let me recap the mission. First thing is I want to help men love being dads. Again, if you don't love what you're doing, you tend to run from it. You tend to try and find something else. I want you to listen as much as you can to the podcast and pick up some things. I'm not going to run through everything that you can do, but I want you to love what you're doing. Being a dad is a lot of fun. Being a dad has ups and downs, but it's rewarding. It's fulfilling. If you're looking for something in your life to give you that sense of fulfillment and you've got kids, then what you're looking for is right there. It's in your family. It's in your children. You have the opportunity to raise people. The fact that they came from you, the fact that they're in your home, that they look to you and call you dad, whether they're biological or adopted, they call you dad. And you have the opportunity to influence them, to mold them. They're your product. You're producing these adults. And you can look at all the things that are bad in the world and you can say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise them to be different. I'm going to raise my kids to be nice. I'm going to raise my kids to be kind. I'm going to raise my kids to love other people, to serve other people, to not be selfish all the time. But when they have the means and they see someone in need, they help. Whether it's financial, whether it's just giving of time, whether it's 
providing a service that they can perform that the person in need cannot. I want to raise kids who care about other people. And you have the opportunity to do that. If you don't like how you ended up, be careful not to go to the other side. Find that sweet spot right in the middle. Don't always black and white. There's a nice gray area that we should all embrace. But work on getting your kids to be the type of person that the world needs. That's what, that's what we need to work on. That's what we need to strive for. And you have that opportunity, which is a really cool thing. So if you're looking to do something great, love what you're doing as a dad. Love being a dad. Because he, just the fact that your kids are yours, just the fact that the miracle of life has come to you and that you have kids, what's not to love about that? And then the second thing is we need to strive to be better dads every day. Yes, when I open up every episode and say I'm not the perfect dad, it is a shared statement. But it's very easy for us to say, well, you know, I'm not the perfect dad. I make mistakes. That's it. Let's finish the statement. And let's finish it with, but I'm trying to be better every day. And let's truly embrace that and accept that. Because if we will try to be better every day, we're still going to fail. We're still going to make mistakes. But the fact that we're engaged with a purpose, that we're trying to be a better dad every day, that we're trying to communicate more clearly and more often with our kids, that we're trying to be there, to be a model of masculinity for our children, to show our daughters what a man should look like and how a man should act and how a man should treat them, to show our boys what a man should look like, what a man does, how a man treats other people. That's what we can do. And so being a better dad every day really branches off into also trying to be a better husband. And for me to be a better Christian, to be a better friend, you really kind of work on yourself in every area of life because your kids will one day have to worry about all the different areas of life. And so you're teaching them before they ever get to those phases. And you're helping them. You're giving them lessons that they will hold on to. There are things that I can think back on that my parents did that I did not appreciate or fully understand until I was married. And then it all clicked. And then it all made sense. And then I appreciated what they did. Never understood it until about the age of 23. But they did it, and eventually it clicked. And it works the same way with us. You're going to teach your kids things. You're going to display and model characteristics and qualities to your kids that they might not understand in the moment, but they will appreciate down the road. So strive to be a better dad. And then the last thing, which is so vital, because this is not about getting first place as a dad and saying, I was the goat of fathers. I was the best dad that there ever was. That's not the goal. That's not the purpose. That's selfish. That's what we're trying to eradicate. We're trying to live more selflessly. It's about community. And when you have a community of dads, you've got friends that you can go to. You've got older dads that you can go to. You've got younger dads that you can go to and you can help. And sometimes you can even learn a thing or two from the younger dads. But you have a community of dads that you can go to, that you've got safety in where you can express your challenge. You can share your stories. Sometimes you share stories so that you can get help. And sometimes you just share the stories so that you can laugh. Because laughter is fantastic medicine. But it, you don't get that if you don't have community. So we need to build a community of dads. And all the benefits that come out of community, the camaraderie, the friendship, the trust, the loyalty, the laughter. It not only helps us as men, it not only helps us as dads, but it overflows and it helps our children. So, don't try and do this alone. Because there are other dads 
who are looking for connections. There are other dads who are looking for help. There are groups already. There's groups that you can be a part of. You don't have to be a part of Fathering Our Future. There are other groups that you can find. But that's the goal. That's the mission. To help men love being dads. To help dads be better dads every day. And then to build that community. The community of dads so that together we can better father our future. We're doing it already. Whether we're engaged with the mission, or whether we're just kind of in it for the ride. It doesn't matter. There will be an impact. There will be an impression. And there will be a result of how we are as dads. So don't just think of it as an obligation. Think of it as an opportunity. Embrace the challenge. Accept the task that is before you. And go out there and be the best dad that you can be. You'll never be perfect, but every day you can be a little bit better. Make that your goal. Make that your mission. Let's share that mission and let's be a community of dads so that we can together better father our future. Thank you for listening today. I hope this has motivated you. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope this has just reoriented that focus. I hope that it's taken something that's been in the back of your mind and put it in the forefront so that you go out there today, you go out there this week, and hopefully it carries on beyond that, but you get out there and you think to yourself, what can I do that makes a difference in my kid's life? What's going to make an impact? What's going to make an impression? I hope that that this will do that for you. And I hope that you'll embrace the mission, not just by yourself, but you'll do it with others. You'll do it with me. You'll do it with the community of dads. This is Father in Our Future, the podcast for dads. I'm Anthony Vandegrift. Thank you for being with me. I hope you'll join me next time. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. I hope it has blessed you and challenged you to strive to be a better dad every day. And if you'd like more great content like this, just subscribe to the channel. Also, if you think dads are valuable and essential to the family, consider supporting this effort. Just go to fatheringourfuture.com and click support. Every contribution helps and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you for being a part of Fathering Our Future.